My Mustang is best Mustang because Roush exhaust best exhaust. My Mustang is best Mustang because manual transmission best transmission. No, my Mustang is best Mustang because I put a spoiler on the back so I can eventually run IMSA and SCCA. My Mustang is best Mustang because I have a cowl induction hood for better cooling. And room for the supercharger I'm never gonna put in. My Mustang is best Mustang because the box had 10 horsepower. This is a 2015 S550. The first year for the generation that Ford indicated the SN95 should have been. Independent rear suspension, double overhead cam engine, adaptable power steering, and traction control that doesn't send you into a ravine. Finally, a factory Mustang that handles. Yeah. It feels like a real sports car. And you can win this real sports car. Someone is going to go home with this Mustang GT. Go to whynotyougear.com, buy a mug or digital download. You don't have to just buy just one. You can buy a few. Each one is a chance to win. Uh, click the link in the description, whynotyougear.com. Once again, whynotyougear.com. <laughs> Look at my valve covers. Look at my cam shapes. Look at the wording on the valve covers. It's just like the powered by Honda decals that were cool in the year 2000. The Coyote engine is the power plant Ford should have made in 1996 instead of the 4.6 modular. Yes, there were larger displacements for the modular, and yes, there was a dual overhead cam version in the Marauder and the SVT Cobra, but the regular GTs had the two valve and three valve 4.6 modulars with a single overhead camshaft. Yes, there was the independent rear suspension 1999 to 2004 SVT Cobra, but that was a special model. And then there was the plan to offer independent rear suspension on the S197, but that went nowhere. Because, blah, we need to keep the 8.8. Because only a solid rear axle will handle the erotic power of the Shelby model. Is that the real reason? Or was Ford too cheap to develop an IRS for 2005? Or did Ford figure homeowners would be too god-smacked by the S197's retro style to notice? The Mustang S550 is an exercise in cognitive dissonance, because it's hard to imagine anything more jarring than seeing one of these driving on the opposite side of the road. But that's exactly what happened with the S550, which became the first Mustang to be sold globally. The S550 is literally <laughs> Mr. Worldwide to infinity. One look at the S550 gives the impression of a car that was created by writing the names of other Mustang models in the Death Note. It attempts to modernize the American muscle car by making previous generations obsolete, bringing it firmly into contemporary car culture by giving it a double overhead cam engine with suspension and handling that suggests it's more than good enough for government work, mechanical functioning, of all previous iterations. The Coyote engine achieves a patriotic rumble and tears down the highways and side streets with the same brutal efficiency of a neighbor begging you to give engine additives an honest shot. It couldn't be any more American if it thought born in the USA was about being born in the USA. In theory, we got a better Mustang and in the trade-off, an angrier looking one to reflect the expressions of its drivers, shouting all the words you can only say in the faculty lounge as a Chevy Trailblazer ahead of him takes a turn far too slowly. Is it just me or is this some old man yelling at cloud stuff? In 2022, we're seriously experiencing an epidemic of people practically coming to a complete stop to make a turn. Either take the turn or don't. You have literally zero, zero oncoming traffic. The side street you're turning onto isn't even narrow. 
There are no parked cars along that street. It'd be one thing if it was actually about safety, but it gives off the same vibes of a person who knows you're waiting for their parking spot, and so they thrust in and out like Peter North, knowing you can't do dick about it. And again, there are no cars coming in the opposite direction. Did I stutter? Open the throttle and go visit Grandma. She's waiting to give you your birthday present. I hope you enjoy a lordship from the Principality of Sealand. Anyway, the steering is adaptable. Uh, you can choose between three levels of they're all kind of the same. The traction control will keep you from doing something stupid. However, this thing has enough power that it still will spin in the rain, even going straight. It has six piston Brembo brakes in the front, which are fantastic and bite in instantly. I don't know which is better, the Coyote motor or the actual brakes on this thing. They don't squeal either. You're usually in sixth gear if you're just driving around by 38 miles an hour. And it can handle most gentle hills in sixth gear and only rarely do you need fifth. And that's the type of driving I've been doing with this thing while having this thing for a month. Topical humor, gas prices. This thing gets better gas mileage than my Toyota 4Runner. I've been taking it easy and this 5 liter V8 is averaging 25 miles a gallon. I know I'm putting premium in, but come on. Although I'm a little bit confused why there's a vacuum gauge in here. Why do I need to care about a vacuum gauge? I'm guessing if you had forced induction, a boost gauge would go here, but Ford decided we got to fill this hole with something. Maybe it's here to impress people who don't know anything about cars. Oh, look, I'm driving and this needle is going all over the place. The car is doing things, performance things. Yes, internal combustion engines all generate vacuum. So yes, let's monitor the equivalent of skills for adolescents. This class doesn't matter. This information doesn't matter. Vacu vacuum doesn't count towards graduation. I can get straight Fs in this class and the car is going to keep going. But it fills a slot in my schedule, so I guess we're taking it. You know, there are classes that are easy A's and then there are classes that are inconsequential Fs. Vacuum gauge. Now, when the S550 dropped, there was a lot of chicken littling about the death of the Mustang and hand-wringing about the S197 being the last line of defense against the erosion of Ford's muscle car legacy. Oh, people will say they were all about it when the news dropped, but people were pissing all over it like opening weekend at the rent fair. You kind of had to be there in the forums around car shows sitting in a lawn chair next to Willie Remember When, his neck turtling into a mothballed bowling shirt, grumbling about how companies like Ford aren't working enough to win his dollar. And to make his point, he heaves himself sideways to evacuate his wallet from his jeans currently battling with his panis. He gets out his wallet, which sounds like this. This is my dollar, he forcefully speaks, holding a one dollar bill up with both hands. This is my dollar, he repeats himself, and Ford isn't getting it. The irony, of course, being that the S550 is now fulfilling the same function for a fresh line of doomsayers. One final bulwark against the intrusion of electric vehicle influence. Realistically, it's a Mustang that should have come along far sooner than it did. Which is not to say that it's better than the one true Mustang S197, but rather that it represents Ford finally putting the Mustang's best foot forward. Between the Coyote engine and the independent rear suspension, you had a Mustang that was arguably the most Mustang of all in terms of its potential to recapture the muscle car spirit that had made Mustangs popular in racetracks and racing and everything and in the popular context in the first place and only really ever existed on the street as Shelby's or Cobra's in the years previous. I mean, why would you not want better handling and cornering from the jump? Why would you not want to prevent these cars from indulging in hard accelerating, harder braking tendencies? A better Mustang in the late 90s and early 2000s could have meant that the Mustang never got that car show cowcatcher reputation. Or maybe that's just wistful thinking. With 122,439 units sold in 2015, the S550 reclaimed the top pony car title from the Camaro. And yet, 
it didn't do much to curtail the reputation of the Mustang as a car that compels high-speed confrontation. It doesn't matter if you have the V6 or the V8 or the EcoBoost 4, an automatic or a manual, a GT or base model. People see Mustangs and they want to throw down because it's the double-edged sword of the type of reputation the Mustang inspires. It's great to be seen as an aggressive enthusiast offering, but you have to also be prepared for getting eyed up by a guy in a prelude as you're merging on the 422. Look, Mustang owners aren't exactly persecuted. That would be absolutely absolutely ridiculous, but I think the only people who have more assumptions made about their character are Tesla owners and WRX fanboys. Even diesel truck drivers don't get this kind of stick. WRX owners are like varsity basketball players who are 5'8", and Mustang owners are like the 6'4 baby Hueys who are big oblivious types who somehow get ball. It's sort of like the horn effect, a cognitive bias where we let one negative trait influence the entire opinion of someone. So that if they drive a Mustang, maybe you remember a bully you had in high school who drove one and you're assuming this person must also take their car way too seriously while simultaneously being really bad at driving it safely. But here's the thing, what's actually bad about driving a Mustang? We affix narrative intent to our lives in an attempt to give the events in our lives meaning. So that if a person is driving a certain car, they want to embody the stereotype that car represents. Sometimes we turn real people we encounter into fictional constructs because it's easier to make sense of them as NPCs in the ongoing AAA product known as Our Lives. But it's cynical to think that everything another person does must be performative. People can like things without irony, while simultaneously not allowing the things they like to overwhelm their personality. A Mustang can be enjoyed responsibly. In fact, most are. Which is why I think there's a gradual shift in the perception of Mustangs as more of these show up on the used market and more people get to experience what it's like to be a Mustang owner. If it's not already, it feels like we're not too far from this being just another car on the road. No more worthy of awe or ridicule than any other. And maybe that's for the best. But for now, it can be an awful lot of fun that carries an awful lot of responsibility. But I want you to experience that responsibility and experience what it's like to be a Mustang owner. Click the link in the description, whynotyougear.com. Someone's gonna win this. It's okay if you go faster than I can go. No, just give it a quick